So I'm happy to, to share some words of Torah with you. Um, the the Gemara in Pesachim says, this one daf Kufches, Hakol Chayavim Ba'ava Kosos Halolo, Echad Anoshim Echad Noshim Echad Tinokos. Tanakama says that everybody's obligated in Dalakosos, men, women, and children. We know the Gemara says that women are obligated in Dalakosos, even normally they would have been exempt because it's a mitzvah says Shazman Grama, time linked mitzvah, but they're obligated. Because they played a critical role in Nitzis Mitzrayim, or they're in the same Sakona, and therefore they're obligated. And the Tanakhama says that Tinoko's children are also obligated. That's part of the mitzvah of Chinuch. But Rabbi Yehuda disagrees, and Rabbi Yehuda says that children before Bar Mitzvah Tinokos are not obligated in, in Dalit Kosos. As he says, What good is it to give children wine? Children don't enjoy wine. It's bad for them. But rather, he says, but rather we give out candies or nuts to children so they should stay awake, be alert, and ask their questions. Um, so what I want to understand a little bit more is Rabbi Yehuda is saying they're exempt from Dalit Kosos, but you know somehow the substitute is giving candies. How is that a substitute, or, or is that a completely different halacha, independent of that? Um, so the Gemara says there, I'm going to come, Shostrum bevas achas, rav ama yide yayin yotza, yide abba kosos lo yotza. That if they drank all four cups of the dalakosa, the wine, in succession, one after the other, so the rav says, the yotza yide yayin, they fulfill the mitzvah of yayin, but they don't fulfill the mitzvah of abba kosos. So what does it mean, the yotze yide yayin? So the Rashbam says that it means, Mishum simchas yontif, kedesani l'kam v'samacht v'chagecha v'emem v'samcha v'yayin. So the Rashbam interprets that means yide yayin, there's a mitzvah simcha yontif, v'samacht v'chagecha. So even though they didn't fulfill the mitzvah of Dalit Kosos, because the Dalit Kosos can't be just drank in succession. It has to be coordinated with the words of the Haggadah, so that the Haggadah and the Bracha Shebichal al Hakos should relate to the Kos. But Mitzvah Simchas Yantav Yoyotze. And Toysus there says, Pirish Yudei Simchas Yantav. Of course, the Yotze Simchas Yantav. We know if you drink wine, the Mars says in Psachim, that for men, Simchas Biyayin. So what is, what's the Chiddush that the Yotze Yudei Simchas Yantav? The Salke Daitach Ho Vitiknu Dalit Kosos Lo Nafik Midei Simchas Yantav Ela Imkain Yotze Yudei Abba Kosos. Because I would have thought that the Yonat Yotze, the Mitzvah Simcha, the night of Pesach, unless you fulfill all the Mitzvah of Dalit Kosos. So we'd understand what's the relationship between there's an independent Mitzvah of Simcha which applies to all the Yom Tovim. Why should Dalit Kosos, if you, we would have thought that you're not Yotzi Dalit Kosos, such with Asachas, that you're not Yotzi Simcha? Why would I think that I'm not Yotzi Simcha Siyantif? So I heard a very beautiful interpretation of this from, from my Rebbe, from Salvechik, from the Rav. And the Rav said like this that you see from Toysus that the mitzvah of Dalit Kosos is not just an independent mitzvah of Chelus to drink Dalit Kosos, but there's a special mitzvah of Simcha the night of Pesach, the night of the Seder, because it's the night of the Geula. And therefore, I would have thought that that special, that, you see, that special mitzvah of Simcha is fulfilled through drinking Dalit Kosos. So Dalit Kosos is also a mitzvah of Simcha. And therefore, Toy says, I might have thought that I'm not Yotzi Mitzvah Simcha Siyantif at all, unless I fulfill Dalit the mitzvah of Dalit Kosos. 
So that's what the Gemara comes to tell me. Rav tells me, no, I'm still Yedei Yayin Yatsa, even though Yedei Dalikosos Lo Yatsa. And uh, if you look in the Michtam, the Michtam says, Michtam Savishin, in the beginning of Ave Psachim, he says, Velo Yifchusumi Abba Kosos, he says, La Abba Kosos should tiknu chachomim lasus belel zeh, velismoach behem keneged Abba Lashon and Shilgaula. In other words, we give even an oni the Dalit Kosos, lismoach behem so that he should be joyous with them, corresponding to the four Lashonos of redemption of Geula. Now, if you look in the Rambam, in Peg Vav, from Hilchis Yontif, Allah Yitzayin, the Rambam says, when he defines the mitzvah of Simcha, he says, Shivish Yimeha Pesach, Ushmoni Shimeha Chag, the seven days of Pesach and the eight days of, of Sukkot, with uh, Shmi Yatzeres, Im Shai Yomim Tovim, Kulam Asum Behesmer Vatainis, all of them are forbidden to give eulogies or to fast, that all those who come in, in his household, all of them, you have to make them joyous. Even though the basic mitzvah of Simcha is Shalmi Simcha, is to offer Korbanos and to eat of them in the base of Migdash. Nonetheless, the Rambam's opinion is, as opposed to the Ravid, the Rambam's opinion is that there are other forms of simcha nowadays, which are, um, according to the Rambam, it's Midi Raisa, according to the Ravid Rabbonin, Kamosha Onu Mavarim Behilchas Chagiga, Yesh Bechal Oso Simcha, the Shmoa Hu Ubanu Vnei Beso, Kol Echad Kavoyla. The mitzvah included in his mitzvah is to make his children and the members of his household joyous. And then he goes on to say how, in fact, you implement that simcha. Kate said, "Hakatanim noslehem kloyes vergozim umigdanos vanoshim konolehem godiv tachshitim." Children, you give them candies and nuts to eat, um, roasted uh, kernels. Women, you buy them new fancy clothing and jewelry. Begodim tachshitim noin kifim amono vahanoshim ochlem boso v'shoshim yain. So the Ram says, but the simcha for men is through drinking wine and eating meat. Um, so you see, we see that the Ramam thinks that the mitzvah, you know, for each category, namely men, women, and children, each one has his own appropriate fashion of simcha. But the Ramam says that the form of simcha for children is, is by giving in Kloyas Vergozim. And the Beis Yosef in Orachayim, the Lecha Mishnah quotes this, is bothered. Where's the Rambam's source? That Ketanim, because the Gemara, when it speaks about Simcha, it says, Anoshim Biyayin, Anoshim, um, that is Bebite Tachshitim. But the Rambam doesn't, we don't know a source, the, the Beis Yosef says, um, that that we have Kloyes Regozen, because the mother said Kloyes Regozen in Sochim was Shalom Yishnu Yishalosh, to keep the kids awake. But how did the Ram know that this is the mitzvah of Simcha for Ketan? But according to what the Rav said, the way we explain the Dalit Kosos, since Dalit Kosos is a form of Simcha, and that there's a special mitzvah of Simcha the night of the Seder, it's the, because it's the night of the Geula, so therefore, the, the Rambam understood that it's not that Rabbi Yehuda is saying an independent um, thing to give Kloyas Regozim. The Kloyas Regozim are a substitute for the Dalit Kosos, because Dalit Kosos themselves are a specific and special mitzvah of Simcha, the night of, of Pesach. And therefore, you see that that's the mitzvah of Simcha for Ketanim. Um, So it, it I mean, now this can be interpreted, I just want to define a little bit more. This can be interpreted in one of two ways. Either that the mitzvah of simcha, of Dalit Kosos, is, has to be fulfilled in a fashion of simcha, or no, that there's a special mitzvah, the simcha, the night of, of the Seder, and this is a, a, it's not unique to the Dalit Kosos, but this is a fashion 
a, a modality for fulfilling the mitzvah simcha of Leil HaSeda. So, um, you know, there's the minig in many, it's based on the Sech Sofim, in many communities, is, is to say hollow in shul. Um, and, and the sofa, as I said, is, is Masech Sofim. So I heard from the Vav, you know, some people say it. I remember when I was a kid in the, in the young Israel Forest Hills, as soon as it came to Harlow, those who didn't have the minute, there was a, 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 an enormous exodus, I guess, that was appropriate for the night of the Seder, the night of Pesach. But um, the Vav said that Reb Chaim, very interesting, said Reb Chaim, remembers his grandfather used to tell them in brisk to say the Harlow. But he himself used to speak to Tim Chazelik during the whole hollow, and he himself didn't say it. We used to tell them to say hollow with a bracha, somewhat of an anomaly. But the, the Rav said that Reb Chaim explained, because there were two mechaivim. One halacha of hollow is the hollow that we say at the Seder, and that's a key of CPT Smachayim. But there's another hollow that we say, based on the, the, the Pasuk, that the, the night of Pesach is unique. Usually we don't say Halal at night. Halal is reserved only for, de, for the day. As we learned from the Pesach, but the night of, of Pesach, we say it both at the, at the Seder Zakim, that's part, an integral part, and from the Raman seems that it, an integral part, but I said that Halal that we say Halal Vodor is part of the Mitzvah Sipin Shaim, but beyond that, the Kedusha Sayom of Leil Haseda is a Mechayev in saying Halal. Um, so, based on what, based on we've what we've heard, or from what I've what I've said from the from the Rav, I think you can understand that that Halal is because there's a separate Mitzvah of Halal the night of the Seder. So it's not just the, because of the Kedusha Sayom; it's the Halal of the Geulah that night is Mechayev in Halal. There's a general halach of halal, according to the Ramban, it's a mitzvah device to say halal on the Yom Tovim. Part of the mitzvah simcha, the Ramban says, is based on the Bahar. But you see, there's a, the, the night of Pesach, is a, the night of the Geula, there's a special mitzvah simcha. So now, in terms of with what can you be yod to the Dalit Kosos? So based on what I said, that part of the mitzvah is a mitzvah of the Dalit Kosos, is a specific mitzvah of simcha, it could be that simcha with with Yayin, the question is, can you be Yotze Simcha with grape juice? Um, maybe the Simcha is only wine which has in it alcohol as well. But grape juice, even the grape juice has a din of Yayin for all halachas. We make a bracha boy for your goffin on it. The, the Muslim Bavas Sochit Adam Eshkov Shalanovim Mumvarachalab Bari for your goffin. A person can. Um, you can crush a cluster of grapes and with the and the juice that comes out immediately before it's been fermented, you can make a boy hagrafen. Do you fulfill the mitzvah of simcha and is it derecheres to do it only on grape juice? So if you say, so in this there's actually a machleka sapoiskin. But Moshe finds in Igris Moshe writes that simcha can only, the dalakoisis you can only do with wine. Because the derecheres is not with grape juice, only with, only with wine. Um, and he brought a proof from the Gemara that we cited, because the Gemara says that Ketanim, Yehuda says we don't give Ketanim yain because it's, it's not good for them. But, but, but why do we have Ramosha X? Why do we have the option of giving them grape juice? So you see, that grape juice apparently is not is not an appropriate option for the Dalit Kosos. Um, in terms of Ramosh's proof, it's not a hundred percent conclusive because Fayish Herzog, you know, one of the owners of, of Kedem told me he, correctly, he said, you know, the, the bots here, the harvest of grapes is in is around September time, September, October. So in the time of the Gemara, by the time Pesach came around, six months later, that grape juice had already been fermented. They didn't have ways of preventing the fermentation. So grape juice really wasn't an option for them at the Seder. 
And I once told this to a David Feinstein that this is what the Fajr said, and he said, you're right. Maybe in that case, it might not be a right. But according to what the Rav said, it would seem that maybe you have to use wine to make kind of this mitzvah simcha. However, I want to tell you a story that a very close friend of mine, Michal Shurkin, told me. He used to visit Simcha um, um, Shlom Zaman Orbach. He was a Machutin of Shlom Zaman. And if this was on Yantif, and Shlom Zaman was drinking grape juice. To Mubakai, presumably, Simcha Yantif. If Shlom Zaman went into his house for a moment, and, and um, the, the other person who came to visit Shlom Zaman at that time was his other Machutin, namely um, Raval Yashiv. So when Yoshev tells with Michal, he says, you know, with us, namely with this grape juice, we can't make him Zion Simchas Yontif. He can't be Mekayim Simchas Yontif, contrary to what his Mechutin is doing, drinking the grape juice. But apparently with Simchas Zelik, excuse me, uh, Rishlam Zalman thought that you can be Yotzei Simchas Yontif with the grape juice as well. But many Doilim, Biskarov, the Chazanish, um, and, and the Rav in his later years, not for the Kiddush, he used to use, because he couldn't drink wine, so he used to be Yotze, um, Dalekoisis with, with grape juice. Um, and um, the Rav had an interesting show. For the first coast, he always used to use wine. And the reason for that was the Shita Sarama, means he was marking for the Shita Sarama, that Kiddush, has to be made on wine that's royal in Asa Chagabe Mizbeach. And therefore, if the wine is Mavusho, or if the wine is sweetened, because if you put Vash into the Yain and Mikdash, Chosov, 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 who is Possel, Lunasachim. So therefore, he used to use for the first cup, for Kiddush, he used to use um, wine, because he would get wine to make sure it was wine that was not Mavusho. But for the other Kosovs, he held that, you, that, that that's a loch only in the Kiddush, not a loch in every kosher loch. So for the other kosher, he used to use grape juice. Um, so we have amongst, amongst the Paiskim and amongst the Doilim, different in Hagim, but many, many Doilim used um, grape juice at their Seder. Um, it's not worse than, Moshe says, Yain, um, She'en o Mozuk, Chatchili, you shouldn't use it, but yeah, but it is good. But I think the Rav thought, that the, uh, presumably, that the grape juice can be used at that point in the Chatchila. Um, so I want to just end, you know, these are, these are extremely trying times for us as a community. We're not able to go to Shul to Davin as a, with Betsiba. And really, it's just part of the, uh, just as Americans, and part of the uh, really the, the, in terms of the, the human experience that we're going because this is a global pandemic affecting many many nations so it's obviously time of anxiety and stress but we look ultimately to the to the Gaula Salema to and have look forward to Pesach the first night to have the Simcha the Simcha spending it with our children and hopefully this this virus the, the the coronavirus will will hopefully soon, though we don't know how long. We have to be careful till then. Hopefully, it'll be it'll disappear. And my my bracha is the chak chos of shemeach. Everybody should be well and healthy and chak sameach. I want to thank Rabbi Ganek for his share on using grape juice for kiddush. Um, <clears throat> Again, the OU will be posting this video to our website, um, as well as many others about Pesach in general and other in-depth topics. Um, the next part we'll be, I'll be presenting now on what we've entitled from brooms to bananas to bubblegum, um, dealing with all the products that, um, dealing with all the products that, um, that you can or can't buy for Pesach. I'd like to, again, I'd like to, Welcome everybody to our program, which is being co-hosted by Nevada Queens, especially for the Queens community, as well as Kiyolaf Torres Pinima under the leadership of Rabbi Yohan Siegelman in Kew Gardens Hills. 
Um, I just want to make sure that everything's working properly. Just again, excuse the chat box everyone can tell me if they can hear me and if they can see me as well. Um, I will be showing, I will be sharing on my screen in a minute or to go through a slide for self presentation. Okay, I've been informed that for many people, this is the first time that they're making Pesach possibly ever or um, in a long time. So we're going to go through some of the common questions that come up about food topics, about products. And we'll try to see if it will also take some questions at the end about what needs Hashgach for Pesach, what doesn't need Hashgach for Pesach, as well as what might be the problem. So, the objective of today's presentation is we're going to go a little bit about the background of kosher and kosher for Pesach food. What makes it unique? What is it that the OU is busy um, with uh, almost a whole year? A lot of people have called up our offices recently and have asked us, oh, is the kosher food supply chain special for Pesach going to be impacted by the coronavirus? Rabbi Ganek actually gave out a statement to uh, numerous media outlets uh, today um, and yesterday that it won't be impacted because, as a matter of fact, the kosher face food has all been finished, most of it, uh, in 2019. Uh, we actually have more kosher face production that's going on um, right after Pesach than right before Pesach. So we're going to talk a little bit about what makes it unique, what changes. Um, we'll talk about the edible food items, which products uh, can you have a Pesach, which was required special Pesach uh, certification, which was don't. Non-edibles, which is always a big question. If, it, if I can't eat it, what's the story in Pesach? And we'll touch briefly on some medicines and nutritionals. This one is a very big question this year because of the whole coronavirus. And if there's a uh, demand for it, we can actually bring in one of our ingredients and uh, from the school expert um, at a later date, give a more thorough and comprehensive overview of the medicinal, medicinal and nutritional um, Passover environment. So just a little bit of the background, uh, you know, the question always is, you know, why are Jews so obsessed with food? You take a look at Jewish life in general, um, we have that, we have that, you know, whenever you have a Kiddush and Shul after Shabbos, the holidays, a Sudas Mitzvah, whatever is going on, someone tell me that it's hard to hear. Is this any better? Just let me know in the chat. So if they can hear, that'd be great. Okay. Um, so the question is, you know, why is it that Jews are so obsessed with food? Thank you. I thank everyone for your feedback. You know, this is the Zoom is the learning curve, and you know, it's a work in progress. Um, Yeah, unfortunately, you know, when I'm working from home, sometimes the internet is as good as we can. Okay, I'm going to try to be as clear as I can. I'm working off of different uh, lines over here. Um, so the question really is, what's the story with food? Why is it that we are so um, obsessed with food as Jews? And uh, I, I believe the answer could actually be found in Parshish Bereshis, the Sadaqa Kohen from Lublin um, actually explained that the original sin of, of mankind, of other Mauritian was through eating the Eitzadah, was through um, eating the forbidden food. And since that was the first there, that was the first sin that the Jews did, in order to atone for that, in order to have a kapar for that, everything we do in this world uh, revolves around food. So Pesach is no exception. We see that Pesach itself is all about the food. Um, additionally, Pesach itself has multiple uh, symbolism of food, we have the chametz that refers to some of the other things that have been left to rise and spoiled. Uh, we have the matzah, which, you know, represents the Jews, both the Jews living in Egypt in a hurry. The charosa represents the mortar of the, the Jews had used to put the bricks together in Egypt, the mortar, you know, the bitter life that the Jews had in Egypt. So food not only is an integral part, not only eating, it's an integral part of the state, it's an integral part of Pesach um, as well. So the question is, you know, what type of cautious concerns could there be, um, you know, with food? So I'd like to just briefly break up how we produce a kosher product into three basic steps. Um, the first step that we have in kosher production is ingredients. That means that all the ingredients that are being used, whether it's for kosher, kosher, Passover food, requires that it either has to be from a kosher source or a kosher poop source. Certain things are inherently kosher from any source, let's say uh, fluid milk regularly or water, some of the basic chemical components but we need to make sure that all the ingredients we use in the food production 
are uh, kosher certified or kosher approved. Uh, the next step is the methods and processes. We have to make sure that the lines themselves are kosher. If there's something that might be dairy on the line or something that's uh, carb on the line or meat, we have to make sure that there's proper koshering in between. Or if there's something not kosher along, we have to also make sure that there's nothing that can impact the kosher status of that product. Same thing comes to Passover production, that um, we will go ahead and make sure that it's properly kosher for Pesach and there's a mashkiach there at all times, checking over the procedures. And then finally, we need to make sure that there is a registration of the final product. Again, one of the things we have is our hotline, uh, which is ringing off the hook this time of year. Uh, we're averaging currently about 200 calls a day to our hotline before Pesach. Is going through. The week before Pesach, it averages 600 calls a day with some days that we have up to 1,000 calls. And people want to know if the product is certified in general, if it's certified in Pesach. If we don't have a registration of that product, both legally and um, logistically, there's no way for us to be able to um, be able to verify that that product is indeed kosher certified. So in this situation, we need to make sure that we have a registration of that product as well. So let's talk a little bit about the food items um, that that are certified for Pesach. Um, so this is actually an advertisement from Hein back, I believe, in 1942 during World War uh, II. Um, you can see over here the Heinz, which was what, the first major uh, OU certification that we had. Um, actually, the OU symbol was created at the behest of the Heinz Corporation. Um, put out an advertisement. This is actually one of the local Pittsburgh Jewish newspapers. Letting people know that although Heinz products are certified by the OU, they are not kosher for Passover, so that there would be no issues um, in the, you know, for the community buying something which wasn't uh, paid for the they did that. None of the highest varieties are paid for So, what are some things that might be a problem on Pesach? Well, obviously, it's the comments from the five grits, but those are five grains wheat, barley, oats, rye, and spelt. Um, once they come in contact with water and allow it to rise, will become comments, and those are not allowed in the product, even in minute amounts. Then we get into kidney oats, which are legumes, beans, corn, and the like, which for Ashkenazim, uh, is a problem that Ashkenazic Minhalic custom is on Pesach not to eat, consume anything that has kidney oats, legumes in it, um, as well as not to, you know, uh, and as opposed to the Sfarim, who will use the kidney oats. The Sfarim is also Gibrox, which is a mixture of masa with water, and those that come from a Hasidic background uh, will not use that either. So the following items are actually are, are considered kidney oats according to our records. Uh, we have the beans, buckwheat, caraway, cardamom, corn, edamame, fennel seeds, fenugreek, black seeds, green beans, hemp seeds, lentils, millet, mustard, peas, poppy seeds, rape seeds, rice, sesame seeds, soybeans, sunflower seeds, teff, and teff. Um, these are not kidney oats, so Ashkenazim could eat them, but they require special checking. Even if we go back to the kidney oats screen for a second here, uh, even for those uh, Sephardim who do eat kidney oats, uh, the minig is, except the halacha actually is, that they would have to check each of these items three times to make sure that there's no uh, extraneous uh, helmets that might have gotten mixed up into the, um, into the packaging. Uh, the same thing would be for these. These would be acceptable for anyone who is not, uh, who is even if they're not trying to ask nothing, but they would have to require special checking, including anise, carob, chia seeds, coriander, cotton seed, cumin, guar gum, locust seed gum, safflower, and saffron. Um, the question is, what about amaranth and peanuts? That is a debate among post game. At one point in time, the OU actually did use peanuts, and we certified peanut oil as kosher pesach. However, that has in recent years, so we no longer certify anything with um, peanuts as kosher for Passover. So, what might be acceptable for Pesach, uh, even without cert so special Passover certification? Um, one of them would be milk. Uh, for those that for those that want to purchase milk before Pesach, if you can't get kosher Pesach in Queens and most major Jewish communities, already the milk is on the store on the shelves in the store. It's kosher Passover certified. However, uh, there are places where people cannot get kosher Passover milk, provided that the milk is bought before Pesach. 
that will be acceptable because any sometimes the vitamins A and D or other additives that add to milk can be considered the chametz, but they would be bottled, they'd be nullified before Pesach as well. Uh, Pesach is the more problematic because if there is a small amount of chametz inside of it, it won't become nullified on Pesach. So if you have to buy the milk on Pesach, you need to purchase kosher fat from milk on Pesach itself. A lot of questions we get is, you know, about oil. We're having a hard time finding oil. What type of oil can you use? So we're happy to announce that any extra virgin olive oil when bearing regular OU certification will be acceptable for Pesach use as well. Um, there's those who like to use other oils as well. Um, and if you take a look at our website at OUPassover.org, we have a product uh, search uh, bar there that allows you to search through all of our certified products for Passover. Some of those include um, avocado oil, so we allow the avocado oil from chosen foods when bearing the regular OU symbol. And any, and for those who like coconut oil, any virgin coconut oil will be acceptable for Pesach as well. Um, the question also comes up about bottled water, the same thing for bottled water and for seltzer. Um, and that is that um, as long as there's no additives in the bottled water, there's no additives in the seltzer, if they're both unflavored, they would be acceptable for Pesach. Um, there's some of the new waters out there that now have all sorts of antioxidants and minerals and the like that are added to it. Um, a lot of times they're used, they use a chametz in a uh, tablet format, which is then added to the water and dissolved. So for those, we say those waters that have, uh, for example, like smart water, which so you certified, we recommend buying it from before Pesach, because then the water would be buckled. Uh, sorry, the chalice would be buckled and the water would be acceptable. But otherwise, if there's nothing added to that water or plain unflavored seltzer, that would be acceptable as well. Same thing with salt. Um, if you buy regular salt that is unidized, would be acceptable without special Pesach certification. Um, but if it's iodized, that could continue to be a problem. A lot of people need to have their coffee. So the question is, what with coffee? So in terms of coffee beans, regular round beans and the like, all coffee beans are fine when bearing the regular oil you. That's not going to hold the, uh, the grinders in the stores can be problematic because of the flavoring, the flavor coffees that are ground on them. But if you're grinding your own beans, there is no problem with the regular. However, decaf beans can be a problem because they're decaffeinated using ethyl acetate, which um, in, is an alcoholic derivative. And depending on where in the world that alcohol is sourced from, it could be from either uh, corn or from wheat based. Mostly in Europe, it's wheat based. And so therefore, we don't recommend um, using decaf coffees without decaf coffee beans without special supervision. Uh, with regards to the instant coffees, a lot of times the instant coffee uses maltodextrin as a flow agent, which could also be conceivably common, and or kidneys. So therefore, we really recommend that you do not purchase any instant coffees without special certification, unless otherwise noted. Again, if you look at our uh, OU um, Passover.org website, there are numerous coffees that we found to be acceptable for Pesach without any uh, special Passover certification. One example would be Folgers, the regular Folgers, both regular and decaf in the instant variety, would be acceptable for Pesach even without an OUP, OU Passover symbol on the label. So then the question comes up, what's the story with bananas? Um, people, you know, we talked about in the, the, in the title, we talked about bananas. So all fresh fruits and vegetables uh, would be acceptable for Pesach. However, uh, different people have different men hugging, different customs uh, with regards to Pesach. And um, those that come from a Hasidic background tend to uh, only allow uh, fruits and vegetables that they can peel. So again, you have to go according to whatever your custom is, speak to your rabbi about it. But again, the Bar Hashem um, in the stores here, um, my wife is out, out of the store yesterday, are fully stocked with fruits and vegetables, and there should be no problem with that. What about frozen fruits and veggies when you buy in the freezer case? So frozen vegetables are often washed in a water that contains an anti-foaming agent which prevents it from foaming over, and those anti-foam uh, might be uh, not kosher with Pesach. Additionally, some companies will use will pack pasta products on the same type of machinery. Therefore, in an abundance of caution, we do not recommend any frozen vegetable without special Passover certification. However, this same is not true with regards to frozen fruit, and therefore any frozen fruit, you know, provided as Ashkach, does not require special Passover certification. Um, the question also is what about frozen fish? A lot of times this year, I mean, there's less people out at the stores, 
But if you don't mind waiting in line at Costco when they do social distancing, it takes about 15 minutes, half an hour to get in in a lot of places. Um, a lot of times the Kirkland salmon is on sale this time of year. So we have approved the Kirkland Atlantic, the primary salmon is acceptable without the plain OU symbol. The Kirkland wild salmon um, is acceptable, but we recommend it to be rinsed off further. There are some of the wealthy farms that DJ they've accepted, we've approved as well. And at Legman that we've approved for Paytop with the plain OU symbol. And again, I would refer you to the OU Passover website that has a list of the uh, frozen fish that we've, we've approved for Paytop. Excuse me. What about spices? Spices get to be a little more tricky, um, and they require uh, special Passover certification because they are processed on equipment that can often contain hummus. It can also be adulterated with kidneys of hummus. The spice factories have a million different things that are flying in the air, and there's no way to really guarantee what's in that without uh, special Passover certification where they make sure everything's clean and there's nothing else flying across the equipment in, in, in the air. Um, you know, a lot of people say, well, I'm in a location now, I can't get kosher pants over spices. So again, the salt with the lungs and the iodized would be fine. And pepper would be fine. You can buy the whole peppercorns and either get a peppercorn grinder or the self-contained unit that will allow you to grind up the peppers. That would be acceptable as well. Quinoa is always a question. Um, and, you know, we got the question a lot at the OU until finally the OU caterers have said, well, we need quinoa to produce sushi. So, uh, for Pesach. So, it's really a machlokas between this and that. We really recommend that you speak to your uh, Ralph about if he allows quinoa. If he doesn't allow quinoa, the truth of the matter is that according to most host games and the way we've decided at the OU is that the quinoa um, really has no relationship to kidneys and therefore would be acceptable. However, we do recommend that you only buy with Passover certification because the way that the quinoa is packaged in high up in the Andes Mountains in Peru, uh, there is barley that are on those lines. So therefore, we only recommend with a special Passover certification on the quinoa. Wine and alcohol, just like Rabbi Ganax spoke about before, that not all of you wines are certified for Pesach. Um, there are some that use uh, flavoring and Kenyas that are not acceptable for Pesach, but the vast majority of them are certified OEP as kosher for Passover, and we just we recommend you check your wine before using them on Pesach. What about bubblegum? Everyone likes their bazooka or their other candies. So again, bubblegum contains all sorts of additives uh, as cereates. It contains various flavors, which are kosher sensitive, and without having proper Pesach certification, uh, one would not be able to partake of that. So, again, we'll go on a little bit to some of the non-food items. Uh, what about brooms? Um, so, we don't recommend that anyone eat the broom. Uh, it's not such a great idea. But all we do recommend is that, you know, if you use the broom to sweep for hummus, to get a new broom head uh, that's clean and has no particles of hummus in it. So, the question for this year that has come up more than the past is, what's the sort of hand sanitizer? And this is a little bit more complicated because the hand sanitizer is an alcohol-based, a high alcohol base, which could conceivably be derived either from a wheat ethanol or corn ethanol. So the good news is that in the United States, um, just about all the um, alcohol, that all the ethanol, all the industrial alcohol is derived from corn, which then make it only kidneys, which then would not be a problem for anybody to use as a hand sanitizer taste back. Even if it were to come from uh, wheat-based alcohol, it also would not be a problem because it's denatured. What they do is they don't want people going around and just, you know, getting a high off of drinking Purell and the sort. So therefore, people go at, so therefore the companies are required by law to add a denaturant to it, which now makes the, um, which makes the hand sanitizer or the products such as perfumes or deodorants um, un inedible and not able to be eaten. And therefore, that would not be a problem. Even if people say, well, Moshe has a chuva that says, well, if you can take the product and make it back into a space to eat product, uh, it would not be, it would be a problem. Uh, the denaturant is such that most people cannot go ahead and take the denaturant uh, media out of it. It would require multi-million dollar equipment and a very high tech lab to be able to remove that. So for most people, um, it's not an issue. Therefore, there's no problem using those hand sanitizers or Purell on Pesach. I mean, I, did, I do have a friend who was a social worker in the psych ward 
at the Kings County Hospital. He told me after he spoke to us one time at Charles Schultz on Shore on Shabbos, he said, well, we actually had a uh, patient this week who pulled all the pure dispensers off the wall and drank it. He said, how good for that, you know, bottle of dice, they call and we deal with somebody in the psych ward. That's not what a normal person would normally do. The um, question always comes up, what's the story with paper goods? Uh, from our perspective, there is no issue with the paper goods, the coins that are on it. They would only be at worst corn derived, and those are not a problem to have, a benefit to have a hana from uh, Pesach. And most of them don't even have those that as they have the corn on it either. So here's a whole list of other items that don't require kosher certification. They, those include for Pesach, those include aluminum foil, aluminum foil baking pan, baby ointment, bags, whether the paper or plastic, body washes, bowl, pub cleaners, candles, cardboard, Carpet cleaners, charcoal, cheesecloth, conditioners, copper and metal cleansers, corks, cosmetics, cupcake holders, cups with the paper, plastic, styrofoam, deodorants, detergents, dishwashing detergents, drain openers, fabric protectors, furniture polish, glass cleaners, hair gel sprays and mousse, hair removers and treatments, insecticides, isopropyl alcohol, jewelry polish, laundry detergent, lotions, any of those hand lotions, even the ones that like Avino. They have wheat in it. If, again, it's not a problem. It's the nature, well, not the nature, but it's inner oil, like the other, or even like the It's not something that a person can eat, or even a dog would eat, therefore, it would be acceptable to pay stock. Uh, paper napkins, oven cleansers, paper towels, perfumes, plastic containers, plates, garland pads, shampoo, shaving cream and gel, shaving lotion, silver polish, skin cream, soaps, any of the soaps, suntan lotion, talcum powder, toilet bowl cleaner, water filters, and again, hand sanitizer. Somebody just uh, pointed out that Sherry Abbott just the uh, I am the one up to the problem putting Dixie plates in the microwave. There'd be no problem with putting the Dixie plates in the microwave. Um, what about oral hygiene? The question is, you know, with toothpaste, mouthwash, lipsticks, these are not items that are really meant to be eaten, um, but they do go into the mouth. And that was a machlekes between our post game and Belsky's that style was always mach, where he felt that this is something that touches the mouth, it goes into the mouth. You should get kosher with Pesach or kosher in general for these items. Uh, Rav Shefta felt that they are not uh, items that you eat, and therefore they're not in the category of a food item, and therefore there would be no problem of Pesach of toothpaste, mouthwashes, and lipstick. We really recommend them to speak to their personal rub for guidance in terms of what they should do um, for Pesach with these items. So a little bit about medications and nutritionals, then we'll open up the floor for questions. Um, it really depends on those medications and nutritionals. The first thing that I would point out is that if you're prescribed a medication by a physician, do not stop taking it without first consulting with your physician. And then if he says you might be able to come off it, then speak to your own. Uh, it really depends on the type of medication. If it's a swallowing pill, if it's a chewable, if it's a gel cap, if it's a liquid medication. Um, both chewables and liquid medications might be considered a food item and therefore might be more problematic. Those that are pills, uh, it are not food items because they're not eaten in the normal way, and therefore they are less of a problem. But our items are they should, again, when it comes to our guidelines, use extreme caution to consult with the doctor. Um, you should know if there's, you know, forms of creams, natural pills, injections, uh, maybe used for Pesach as well. It's also permissible to grind pills and mix them on the food so a child can take it. But, you know, consult the doctor to make sure that the child is getting the correct dosage and the potency of the pill is not compromised. Look at medications, the chewable pills, and those pills that are clothed with a flavored glaze or gel caps might not be kosher as well. And therefore, if possible, they should replace them the direction of the doctor with a non chewable and uncoated version. If it's not possible and a person is in a state of sakana uh, or something that's not any possible danger to human life, the medication would be owned and consumed. The same applies if the condition is not yet a suffix sakana but might deteriorate to that point, especially in today's day and age. Your rabbi should, you should be in contact with your rabbi just to make sure that you're maintaining um, a healthy uh, medic, um, medication and any type of medication, any type of, sorry, any type of medications or health substances that you need to maintain your, uh, your body and your immune system. Um, so if the substitution is not possible, uh, you know, consult with your rabbi. Oftentimes, uh, many items contain kidneys, which will be permitted to people who are ill as well. So then there's also nutritional, such as beta fiber uh, and the like. Uh, they're thick and still have problems eating, digesting, and sure as well. Uh, for the elderly and infirm, some of them might contain pumice, 
uh, which means my new amounts is to be buffed before Pesach. They might contain kidneys as well. For those that are elderly or infirm or young children, we have a whole list on our OUPassover.org website of the, of, the, of the nutritionals that we've approved for Pesach. But it's the Chavit that we bought for Pesach, and again, purchased it before Pesach. What about prenatal vitamins? So for prenatal vitamins, um, you know, it depends, again, if it's a chewable, if it's a swallowable pill. Uh, this year and, and last year, Maxi Health had a special hummus free run, which I don't know how available they are, but they do have special prenatal vitamins that are available uh, for Pesach with the OU on it. Baby food is another common question. And that, first off, uh, for those who have never made Pesach before or have not really looked into food products for children, kidney oils, the, the coffins of kidney oils for Ashkenazim do not apply to children and the ill. So, however, it is best not to use rice or millet, and you need to keep the equipment separate. Um, we do have uh, on our website a way to make your own rice cereal. Um, the baby seals that are out there do contain hummus inside of them, and therefore we do not recommend any of the actual baby cereals um, for Pesach, even though it's just as like rice. Now just give me a second, and uh, I will take questions in a couple minutes. Just I'll hold on to the question. Um, we do have Gerber baby foods that are accessible for Pesach. The Gerber baby foods, carrots and squash, are not certified for Passover by the OU. However, we have identified them as being accessible, and therefore you could go ahead and buy the carrots and squash for the children. The green beans and peas are kidney use during the OU, but again, will be accessible for the infants as well. Uh, first choice under the OU also has special OUP certified uh, products such as applesauce, carrots, pears, and sweet potatoes, which are actually made as kosher in the past. Many of the baby formulas only contain kidneys, and we have a whole list again on OUPassover.org. There's too many for them for me to mention, uh, but <clears throat> uh, they are there with most of the basic uh, formulas listed. Uh, again, the OU is here to help you with your Pesach presentations. Uh, you can email us anytime at kosherq at ou.org. Our hotline is 212-613-8241. Again, 212-613-8241. Um, and we have operators standing by Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. till 5 and until 2.30 on Friday. Uh, the week before Pesach, we'll have extended hours until 6 p.m. as well as the Sunday before Pesach and Arab Pesach as well. Uh, we're also available at OUKosher.org on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And we have, as I mentioned before, our special Passover website, which is www.OUPassover.org. So that concludes the formal part of my presentation. Um, I'm going to open up the floor now to um, any questions that people might have. And give me a second here. I will now give you the ability to unmute. But fun? This is not a good idea. But, oh, um, if you have if anyone has questions if you can raise your hand. Um, we'll be glad to, you know, unmute you and you can ask those questions as well. One question just came to me was where can we find info on two states lipsticks that are acceptable? Um, we don't have any guides that have toothpaste lipsticks. There are a few different ones that are available out um, in the public. The one that we recommend is Javé Best from Los Angeles has a guide on those, and that's what we use at the OU office. Um, anyone else with a question, you can raise your hand, or you have the ability now to unmute yourself uh, one by one. Oh, so someone's asking, what about um, honey? Uh, that's an excellent question. There are two other points that I did not cover. I'd like to just go back for a second, and that is honey. Um, previously, we've said that honey, there is a possibility that um, pure honey is adulterated. There's been reports of that in the industry that they might use corn syrup in that. This year, due to the, you know possible shortages, as well as the inability of people to get some of the products, we would recommend if it has, so long as the honey has an OU on it, and it says pure honey, that would be fine for Pesach. Um, again, OU Password Org has a whole list of honeys that we've also approved for Pesach. Uh, another question we get is what's the story with nuts? 
and those assembled for Pesach. So with regards to nuts, um, raw nuts in their shell do not require Passover certification. Again, the raw nuts in their shell, but shelled nuts that list BHA, BHC, or any other type of additive on the ingredient require special Passover certification because of the way those preservatives are, um, are made. However, if there are no additives listed, raw nuts may be acceptable when buried in OU symbol. Pecans that are whole or have are acceptable with plain OU certification, and midget and pecan pieces require Passover certification. Um, so that's also about honey and nuts. Any other questions? A second. Yeah, TC has a question. Um, if I have a broom that's pretty new, um, could I just like spray it with Ajax or something like that to make whatever hummets, or do I really need to buy a new broom? Um, that's a good question. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. The problem is that sometimes the Ajax doesn't get into it and doesn't fully um, get rid of that hummet, like make it totally pogum. And we really recommend, you know, finding a way to get that broom so that it's clean, just in case the brooms do have, you know, real pieces of hummets that get stuck in there. Uh, okay, thank you. Anyone else with a question? You can either unmute yourself or raise your hand and, you know, we can unmute you. Yeah. DD. Okay. What about cleaning products? We did, uh, we did mention before cleaning products would be acceptable from uh, would, would be acceptable from any source. There's no problem with that. Pacifiers would be the same as baby bottles. We recommend getting new ones for Pesach because of either what's prepared in it or the way that the stock is. Like at a certain point in time, it's really impossible. A new dustpan, it is possible, but the dustpan just to make sure it's cleaned well because that is um, that that's just a solid item which can be perfectly clear. Uh, uh, cover. What about a high chair? So I'm just going to make a note um, about costuring on our website, all you pass over there, we actually go through the kitchen bit by bit and piece by piece has over there a high chair we recommend um, scrubbing down and then covering the tray for the reaction of Pesach. Okay, TC. Uh, TC has another question. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask about, um, okay. all right. Um, can you send the PowerPoint, this one that you're showing? Um, I have to think about it. Like um, the, uh, the, web, the, the web now will be available on the OU's website, so that will be available in that, in that format. Okay, fine. Okay, thanks. Anyone else with a question? Either you can chat the question or you can um, raise your hand. Can you quickly go over how to kosher sink and kit an oven? So we're going to be having another seminar jointly hosted by the OU and the Vada Queens next on Sunday, this coming Sunday night, also at 8 p.m. with the same Zoom link. And then we're going to have questions and answers of Rosh Elephant, who is the Chief Operating Officer of the OU, as well as Rabbi Chaim Schwartz, who is the Executive Vice President of the Vada Queens. We'll go through this entire kitchen bit by bit to uh, go through how to kosher things. So I would just ask you to, if you could wait till then, if not, um, you can again visit our website at OUPassover.org. Yeah, it's going to be the same link for Sunday night as well at 8 p.m. So my ear is asking that peppercorns are okay with OUP. Ground pepper is a problem for the same reason as all the spices that the facilities have all sorts of contaminants and other particles that are flying and even on the lines, we don't recommend them without passive certification. Uh, again, Leo is asking about boiling water, a separate spot on the sink. Again, Rabbi Schwartz will discuss that uh, this coming Sunday night. Question from Y. Rosenthal. He lives in New York City in a new apartment. I don't have a filter yet. And I'm not sure if I can get bottled. I'm not sure if I can get bottled water. I heard that if I cook food, I can add regular water. Is that true? 
Um, so we really do recommend, um, the first off, it was Machoikis, Zadolsky, and Rishak, because that's how Zadolsky felt that there really was no problem with the water in New York City. Rishak there felt that there was a problem, and at the OUE or Mach, they require any food service to operation in New York City to use a filter on their water. That being said, um, we really do recommend, I, I am not sure about boiling water. I'd have to look into that. Um, I don't know, I don't want to say one way or another offhand, but if you have a Brita filter, that would also work. Um, Danny's asking what materials do you recommend using cover counters? Again, covering counters, we'll discuss that more with costring. Uh, that's up to each person what they prefer. A lot of you use contact paper. People will use, um, will use corrugated plastic cover tops. People use just butcher block paper. Um, really, as just about anything that can, you, you can imagine that can be covered can be used. Um, Rabbi Siegelman doesn't like uh, Brita filters. He holds that they're not good for um, filtering out the bugs. Um, but on the stink of Brita filter, on the stink would be okay. Again, I haven't really, I had whole house filters, and I don't normally deal with the New York City waters, so I can't say one way or another. I have to take a look at that in depth for you. Um, a few other questions that came up. What you do if you don't pack your knives for Pesach that were used last year, and you don't remember which is dairy or meat? Um, so the truth of the matter is that what, normally we say that you, the halacha is that when you kosher something, you can't kosher from milk to flesh. However, uh, with regards to Pesach, it's the one year, one time of year that the halacha is that you're allowed to go ahead and change something from a status. So all you do is use, do a regular kosher in the hagol, take a pot of water, boil it up, and dump those knives in, make sure they're clean, and they have been used obviously in 24 hours, uh, dump them in boiling water, take them out, Rinse them off on the cold water, then you can then designate them for whichever one you want to use for milk or for inflation. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, Yaku Epstein is asking what's the story about putting Dixie plates in the microwave instead of before, and that was that um, there really is no problem putting Dixie plates into the microwave on paste off. You can go ahead and use that. Um, Esther is asking, do I need a new urn? Um, again, it depends on if you can kosher it. It's like any type of other pot. Um, if you can, you know, kosher the whole thing, basically boil it up uh, and then pour hot water over the spigot and all the sides, you could kosher the urn as well. Again, Rabbi Schwartz will uh, deal more with the urn of Hagoa, the pots and pans, uh, next week. For garbage can, uh, iPhone is asking, do you need a new garbage can? Uh, you do not necessarily need a new garbage can, provided that you can just get it clean. Sometimes the garbage cans have things that, you know, really stick to the bottom. Any other questions? People can feel free to unmute themselves. They have that ability or to raise your hand. Does pure maple syrup need an OUP? Um, that is a good question, and I don't know the answer to that. I have to take a look at that. I'm sorry. Give me one second. Let me see if I can just pull up one of my databases here. If I can get an answer on maple syrup. Yeah, so maple syrup for Pesach would require uh, Passover certification. Any other questions? Does gefilte fish need an OUP? Most definitely, um, Karen is asking about gefilte fish needing to be kosher fast enough. Most definitely, the regular gefilte fishes use a matzo meal in them, which a lot of times are not kosher. The past enough matzo meal are, believe it or not, covered matzo. And so, therefore, you need to make sure, you absolutely need to make sure that your gefilte fish has an OUP on it. Then you need to be careful. Some, if you eat kibros, or if you don't eat kibros, or how matzo you are on the different types of matzos, because some of the gefilte fishes that are certified for Pesach might have matzo meal in it, which may or may not meet your requirements. Pitloss <clears throat> is asking, excuse me, are you allowed to use a pot filler that you use during the year for Pesach? 
Uh, I presume you're referring to a pothole that's attached to the wall that's filling out. Can you uh, IM me about that? Yeah. Um, so that would be the same thing as the sink. You would have the same thing. You should let it sit, make sure it's clean, let it sit for 24 hours, and then do Hagola over the spouse and then change the end of it if you can. Any other? Regular ground coffee is good with any hex or just an OU. Um, again, this is an OU uh, webcast, so really we recommend the ones that have an OU on that. Again, the ground depends on if it's just ground in the package, that will be fine. If it's ground at a supermarket, you go through one of those grinders. We don't recommend that for Pesach because of the hummus that can legally be on those grinders from the other uh, flavored coffees. Uh, but in truth, the truth of the matter is that uh, regular ground coffee would be acceptable um, even without a hatcher, as well as just plain uh, coffee beans. What about a water pitcher? Um, so a water pitcher uh, is a good question. Again, it really depends. We're machmer, and we recommend that people get into water pitchers. Again, if it's not possible and it's something that, you know, always stays cold, um, you can then let it, you know, clean it out and uh, then use it uh, afterwards. If it's the type of thing that you could actually do hago on, then it's best to do hago. If you can't do it, again, it depends on the situation. Uh, the Empire Chicken Eat OUP. So the story with meat, I actually did not put them in here, is that raw meat, um, hold on one second. One second. Just lost my. Uh... Okay, I'm um, sorry. Um, in terms of meat, any raw whole meat would be accessible for Pesach. I mean, if you have a whole roast, um, regular whole chickens, chicken cutlets, even if it doesn't say OUP on it, that would be fine. However, if it's ground beef, uh, that would be a problem because a lot of times the meat is ground on the same lines as you say kishk and other type of hummus items. So therefore, anything that's ground or further processed, such as uh, pickled, uh, using citric acid and the like, like a corned beef, that would have to be uh, certified for Pesach. Just plain, raw meat, uh, like a chicken, a chicken cutlet, a steak, a flunkin, uh, a brisket, that would be fine even without the OUP symbol on it. Um, do we have to change the other things filtered for Pesach? Um, but we do recommend that uh, we there, we do not make any recommendations. I guess as if you're it's like changing your pipes. Um, there's no need to change your pipes in the house or pay stock as well. Um, what about water filter on or in a fridge? Also, an ice maker. Um, one second, please. I don't know often about the um, the ice breakers in the fridge. I guess it really depends on what it's used for and things like that. Um, do you have to go through books uh, looking for hummus? Uh, again, there's different than talking about that. It depends on where your books have been. My wife is personally a master and fills off all my farm of where anything has been, uh, could have possibly gone through unless you check it out. The minute is to really go through your farm. Uh, that might have got the hummus in them if you want to eat some Pesach, but if you know for sure that there's no hummus in them, it's not a problem. Michelle was asking, ever clear alcohol use as a sand sanitizer? Um, I'm not familiar with ever clear. Michelle, please uh, instant message me about ever clear alcohol. Is that just like a pure alcohol or is that a specific type of alcohol? Uh, so it's actual, I just looked it up, it's an actual grain alcohol. I would not recommend this for Pesach, and there's a good chance it actually is hummus as well. So I wouldn't recommend ever clear alcohol. Um, why Rosenthal is asking about cut up pieces of raw salmon, other fish. Again, it depends on how they're cut up. Was it a hummus knife? Was it not a hummus knife? 
If it's fresh cut salmon with a clean knife, uh, then it would be fine. Uh, Pith is asking that the brake fluid needs to be covered on Pesach, provided that it's sealed so you can't get to the dishes inside, then there's no problem with the brake front on Pesach. Uh, you just want to minimize anything that you might be able to get to on Pesach. 